Howdy folks, hope you're all having a good one, and welcome back to World of Warships with Rear Admiral Jingles, where today, in this tier 9 arms race battle, hence only 6 ships per team, um, I'm not sure how you pronounce that, Kage Acheron, Kage Acheron, we're just going to go with Acheron. In the Japanese premium tier 9 battleship, the Musashi, is going to be having, well, you know, this matchmaking isn't actually bad for a battleship. Three battleships, one cruiser, and two destroyers on each team. Okay, the two destroyers are nasty, but at least there's no aircraft carrier. Honestly, if I was in that Schroeder, the only cruiser on the team, I'd be shitting bricks. But as far as the battleships go, this isn't bad matchmaking. I mean, yeah, the two destroyers could be a problem. Um, but the cruiser probably won't be, and uh, you're at least on equal footing with the other three battleships on the enemy team. Well, with two of the three battleships on the enemy team, one of them's a Kearsarge, the hybrid battleship aircraft carrier. And that could be a problem, because the major difference, aside from the tier difference between the tier 9 Masashi and the tier 9 Yamato, oh, sorry, the tier 10 Yamato, of which the Masashi is the sister ship, is that the Masashi's AA is even worse. I mean, the Yamato's AA is nothing special. These Japanese battleships tend to suffer from a over-reliance on some extremely dubious 25mm short-range anti-aircraft guns. Um, but the Masashi's AA is even worse. I mean, it is. Even in a game where good AA is pretty worthless, the Masashi's is spectacularly bad. So I wouldn't expect him to be shooting any aircraft down if he gets targeted by the Kearsarge. Aside from that, the Masashi is actually a pretty strong ship. I mean, it is basically a Yamato, just at tier 9, aside from the even worse AA. The guns, they're not quite as accurate as the same guns on the Yamato. But they're still the Yamato's 18.1 inch guns. They can smash through 32 millimeters of plating as if it wasn't even there. And it's still the Yamato's hull and the Yamato's hit points, just at tier 9. Okay, the Yamato's hull isn't special. Um, it's not known for being a particularly well-armoured ship. And it isn't. And it also suffers from the same vulnerabilities. Oh, hello. Enemy destroyer spotted already. In fact, both enemy destroyers spotted already. There's the Benham. Shots out. The team are not focusing on the Benham, though, because a much, much more dangerous ship in a gunfight, at least, has been spotted, the Mogador. And it looks like, yes, this is good. Everybody's focusing him down. That is an extremely dangerous gunboat. The Kitakazi got away with minimal damage. The Mogador took a pasting. Oh, and there's the Kearsarge. Nine 18.1-inch guns lined up and ready to go. The Kearsarge is given a nice big flat broadside. Shots out. Remember, these are 18.1-inch guns. They're not the biggest guns in the game, but they're pretty big, and they... Yeah, that was kind of disappointing. I don't know what it is about this game. It seems like every time you stick a flight deck on anything, it just removes the Citadel. When, in fact, it should do the exact opposite because everything up to the level of the flight deck is packed with fueled and armed aircraft, ready to go, aviation fuel, fuel pumps, and all of the ammunition for those aircraft. But instead of being more vulnerable to large caliber armor piercing shells, they just, uh, yeah, anyway. Well, the Mogador's down. Seemed a bit foolish to allow himself to get spotted so soon after getting pasted, but it turned out he'd done that in order to get close enough to sink the Schroeder with his torpedoes. So one destroyer down on the enemy team, and one cruiser down on Acheron's team. I mean, I'm quite happy with that trade. At least I would be if I was in a battleship. The less destroyers you have to face, the better. Oh, those look like Benham torpedoes. Kitakazi eats one. Could have probably very easily avoided the second one, the one that sunk him if he just slowed down and turned in towards them as soon as they were detected, but nope. So, great. One cruiser and one destroyer down. And the Kitakazi is a very, very capable destroyer. That's a huge loss to the team. I think the Ismo ate a torpedo or two there as well. Shots out at the Agir. Can we get a Citadel? We can. Only the one, though. Still, good enough. We'll take it. Let's have a quick word about the Benham as uh, Acheron. Waiting for the guns to reload and hoping he can get some shots over the island there and maybe finish the air gear off. 
Oh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not. So, there's an extremely suspicious looking smoke screen up there. And the thing about the Benham, it's a lousy gunboat, but holy shit, that thing has a heavy torpedo armament. Now, they're not particularly fast torpedoes, but it's, well, it's not so much the speed and the damage that the torpedoes do. And they don't do a small amount of damage, it's just the sheer volume of torpedoes that that thing can put into the water at once. It has two launchers on each side and an extremely fast reload, which means it's possible for the Benham to have 32 torpedoes in the water at the same time. Some good hits on the enemy is a mode there. Again, no citadels, but some decent armor-piercing chunk damage. But I'm pretty sure the enemy team are definitely going to be focusing that Ismo down. The team have picked up a buff. So this is arms race, of course. There are various different buffs that you can collect to assist the team. And yep, the Ismo's down, so it's, um, it's not looking good. There's only three of them left against five enemies, but they should be able to take the enemy Ismo down. The Go on, Nystrashimi. Finish him. The Nystrashimi is not bad as gunboats go. It's a, it's a fairly well-balanced destroyer. And he's got him. Okay. Oh, here come the Kearsarge's strike aircraft. Oh, that's kind of good. Yes, Japanese battleships tend not to be very well armoured. And with usually a maximum of 32 millimetres of deck plating, they can take a fair amount of damage from high explosive. Right, there's the Kearsarge again. Now, at the moment, the Neustrashimi is getting into a gunfight with the Kearsarge, which is a bit brave, because, I mean, you know, the Neustrashimi's guns are all right, but they're not that good. And giving your position away to something that has aircraft can be very, very hazardous when you're in a destroyer. The major problem here, of course, is that thanks to his positioning, Acheron doesn't have shots at anything. So he's manoeuvring around these islands here in order to bring his guns to bear on that enemy hybrid as the Neustrashimi dumps his torpedoes in the water. Oh, look at that. Look at that. You could not ask for a better target. Shots out. No citadels. <laughs> of course not. It's got a flight deck. And it's run itself aground. And surprisingly, it's on fire. I didn't think you were allowed to do that to aircraft carriers. Well, then again, I'm not entirely sure, because a carrier gets an automatic damage control, uh, which lasts forever. I'm not sure if that's true of hybrids. Either way, the fires are out. And again, no citadels. I mean, at this range, with 18.1-inch guns? Fuck off, game. Oh, yeah. It is, of course, a hybrid. It does have battleship guns. And, well, yeah, there's the famous cheek armor vulnerability of the Yamato, which is also inherited by the Masashi. You can get citadeled right through the cheek armor, and that looks like it's exactly what happened. But he's taken the Kearsarge out. With no citadels, of course, because he's got a flight deck, he's not allowed to citadel it. Of course, just because the Kearsarge has been sunk doesn't mean it can't still ruin your day. <laughs> and with the Masashi's atrociously bad AA, uh, he's got no chance of shooting any of those aircraft down. But he can put shots across the map and maybe take that AG out. I mean, maybe. Oh, that's bad news. They've just lost another ship. The Baiji's gone down. Although it is now just two on two. It's a battleship and a destroyer versus a cruiser and a destroyer. Oh, Citadels, nice. Can't quite see how much damage he did to the gear, but that's a nightmare situation for the cruiser. Having to go up against a battleship armed with 18.1 inch guns. And you'll note that Acheron is detected, and it's not the gear, So he has to be in line of sight of the Benham. And remember, the Benham, just in case you'd forgotten, and I'll probably remind you again later, can put up to 32 torpedoes into the water at the same time. But Acheron does have on his team, the Neustrashimi, which cannot compete against a Benham when it comes to torpedo loadout, but will absolutely spank the Benham in a gunfight. As long as it doesn't have the Agia shooting at as well. Oh, here they come. It's gonna take one. No flood, he had the damage control up. Just the one. And yeah, the Benham still sees him. He's still detected. Got a rough idea of where the Benham is though, but the major problem right now is the fact that the key area, the sole cap circle in an arms race battle, 
nicely predicted. Dodged all of those. But the, the sole capture point in an arms race battle is now available for capture, and somebody's in there capping it. And the Aegir's just popped up, so we know it's not him. You cannot afford to let the enemy team take that cap circle. Because if you do, well, they're going to win very, very quickly. So the Neustra Shimmy's gotten himself into the cap circle there. He's contesting it. And Acheron is about to slip inside the cap circle border as well. The other thing you have to remember about arms race is this cap circle, or the key area as it's known, shrinks as the battle goes on which forces you to fight at closer and closer ranges. Or you just end up giving the cap circle to the enemy team and they win. So, not ideal circumstances for a very much not brawling battleship like the Masashi. But it is what it is. You just have to deal with it. Okay, the AG has been spotted. And of course the Masashi turns faster than its turrets, but he's able to get the front turrets firing. Uh, sorry, the rear turret firing and then the front turrets. And the Benham's gotten spotted and is engaging the Neustrashimi in a gunfight. The Benham very wisely decides, nope, pops his smoke screen. The Neustrashimi, because he doesn't want to get caught in a sandwich between the Aegir and the Benham, does the same thing and pops his smoke screen. So that's good news for the Neustrashimi, but it's not great news for Acheron because the Neustrashimi was doing the spotting and you can't spot from inside a smoke screen. It's nice to see that the Neustra Shimmy is not hanging around inside that smoke screen, though, because smoke screens are torpedo magnets, and the Benham has a lot of torpedoes. Acheron did not, however, wait for the Neustra Shimmy to respot the Aguirre. He's launched his spotting aircraft, and that was what detected it. And with a bit of luck here, he should be able to finish this guy off. Oh, his secondaries are firing. The Benham's been spotted. Well, let's face it, with these guns, it's not going to take a huge amount of luck to sink a low-health cruiser like that. And then, just as we were about to commence the celebrations, disaster strikes. I don't know how the hell a Neustra Shimmy lost a gunfight to a Benham. I can only assume that it ate one of the Benham's torpedoes. The Benham thought, yep, you're on low health, I'll take the Pepsi challenge now. Finished him off with his guns. This is the nightmare scenario for a battleship in an arms... Well, not just an arms race battle, in any kind of scenario. Last one left alive on your team against a stealthy destroyer with a heavy torpedo loadout. And you don't, well, obviously you don't have radar because you're a battleship, but you don't even have hydro. And even worse, have a look up here. That destroyer, even though he can't see you, pretty much knows exactly where you are because he's got the RPF or radio position finding skill. So he can be behind an island and still know which side of that island you're gonna come around because Acheron has to try to chase him down. You can't run away from a destroyer in a battleship and win an arms race battle, because the destroyer will just take the cap circle. Oh, and the destroyer now has line of sight. That's the only useful piece of information we've got. There he is. Don't know why the Benham allowed himself to get spotted. It's not like he needs to get close in order to launch the torpedoes, but he took the risk, and it's going to pay off because, yeah, Acheron doesn't have enough space to complete this turn and avoid the torpedoes. There is an island in the way. And he's going to take one, two, three. He's used the damage control. Oh, no, 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 no. And another two. And that very nearly finishes him. Fortunately, he didn't take any flooding because the damage control was still active. But I can guarantee you... But that Benham has just turned around and once again he's risking getting himself killed by opening up with the guns. I'm assuming that the Benham has launched the torpedoes from the other side unless they're still on cooldown, which seems unlikely. I suppose he was trying to start a fire um, with the damage control on cooldown. That may have been enough to kill Acheron, but he didn't succeed. He was also lucky that Acheron's guns hadn't turned around and he wasn't able to finish him. There goes the spot on aircraft, the one and only advantage, and it's not much of an advantage in this situation that Acheron has. Once again, the Benham holds all of the aces. He knows that Acheron was stationary and is going to be really slow building up the speed. Oh, and he's gotten himself spotted again. What the? Why? I don't get it. Benham, you understand how this whole stealth thing works, right? Maybe not. 
lit up by the spot on the aircraft as it completed its orbit, but he's gone undetected again. Acron's decided he needs a little bit more warning of these torpedoes. And of course, the Benham again holds all of the aces, or it should. It's got superior stealth, it's got lots and lots of torpedoes, it doesn't need to get spotted. And it has the RPF skill, so even though he currently doesn't have line of sight, he knows exactly which way he needs to go to find Acheron, because he's got an arrow pointing straight towards him on his UI. And with five minutes of this battle remaining, and at most an 85 second reload on its 16 torpedoes, that Venom has all the time in the world in which to take his time and do this right. Again, the only useful information that Acheron has here is that the Benham can see him. Which means... Well, there's only really one place the Benham can be. And that's directly to the rear. Yep, and he got himself spotted again. He, again, he's trying to set a fire. I mean, he's pretty safe. There was no way Acheron was going to get to return fire there, but he managed to pick up another hit point buff. Which was very, very badly needed. Thing is, he's not going to win this by running away from the Benham. Fortunately, he could use the island there to avoid those torpedoes. And getting closer to the Benham isn't exactly ideal either, because that gives him less time to avoid the torpedoes. He's been spotted again, so the Benham must be right there. It's the only place he can be in order to have line of sight right now. The spot on the aircraft is still up. The cap circle is shrinking. And it's no longer contested. So Acheron does at least know that the Benham is no longer inside the cap circle. Acheron could be doing himself a favour here, though, by switching to the high explosive. It's not like he's going to need the armour piercing in case a battleship shows up. It's just him and the Benham. More torpedoes. That's two sets. Right now the Benham's going to be turning around to get the two launchers on the other side working. And he's allowed himself to get spotted again. Well, he's used the smoke screen this time, but now he doesn't know. <laughs> I mean, he's got a fairly good idea of where Acheron is, but he's firing blind. And Acheron's one chance now is to close the distance, and thankfully he has now loaded the high explosive, better late than never. Wait, he's spotted? The, the Benham's left the smoke screen. Well, that's not actually a terrible idea. Although that is a terrible idea. <laughs> Yeah, he's beached himself, but the smoke's still going. The Benham could have used the smoke to disengage in between the gap between those two islands. That would have been a good idea. Running himself aground in front of the Masashi, however, was not. It looks like he's gambling it all on the torpedoes, and you know what? That's not a bad bet. Oh, he's going to take at least one more. He's got the shots out. He didn't die from the torpedoes. He gets the Benham! <laughs> Oh, Benham, why? <laughs> why were you in such a hurry? You had all the time in the world. You had every advantage. And somehow you managed to fuck it up. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs> it made for an amusing video, at least. <laughs> Congratulations, Acheron. Um, there's no way you should have won that. And yet, somehow, mostly thanks to the Benham, you did, and gave us all a really good laugh in the process. So, uh, yeah, well done. And everyone else, I hope you enjoyed it, because that's it for today. As always, take care, and I'll catch you next time.